Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Hello. <coughs> <laughs> And the 1,000th hour. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yes. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Hoop. Awesome. Thanks, John. Mic sounding good. That's fine, man. I've got all that. Beautiful. All good. Thank Great. You. Thanks. Um, oh, look, just a scotch on the rocks.
under largely sunny skies. Clouds, nothing to complain about. Welcome to uh, ladies semi-final day here at the Australian Open 2017 uh, playoff and a beautiful day here in uh, Melbourne town. Very pleasant conditions certainly for the players and what has been a hot week of uh, tennis action. A, a huge prize to get in to the first Grand Slam of the year and it comes down to the final four on the ladies side to decide who goes through to uh, tomorrow's final. Brett Phillips joined by Bojana Babusik who well has got great memories of course of this week having won a few years ago Bodge and this is a big day for, uh, of course, uh, four ladies trying to get through to the final. And, well, depending who does get through and win tomorrow, we're going to have a player playing for the very first time in an Australian Open main draw. Absolutely. And I'm really looking forward to this first match. Olivia Trangimulia, the number six seed, up against the young player, Jamie Fullis, the number three seed. And these ladies are very well deserving of their position. And then we've got that second semi final after. But, uh, Obviously a huge opportunity for one of these ladies to earn their spot into the main draw of the Australian Open. I'm sure there'll be a few nerves, but look, they've played a couple of really strong matches. They've worked their way into the tournament and uh, now the opportunity is up for the taking. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Alison By, the number two seed, has had a terrific week. Abby Myers, it'll be a match a little bit later on, but looking forward to Jamie Fullis. I know you're a big fan of Jamie. We've had a bit to do with her, Boyana, of course, from uh, Victoria and uh, just 17 years of age. So the youngest of the four remaining players at this semi final stage. And Olivia Chandra Muller, of course, a great week knocking at the top seed in Arena at Roddy Inova. So this is a huge opportunity and uh, high stakes coming up this afternoon. And you look at the ages of these first. Uh this first match, Jamie 17, Olivia 19, perfect playing conditions, mm. possible afternoon shower, maximum of 21 degrees, but uh, the weather's been pretty good, so hopefully no rain on court today. Yeah, no doubt about that, and you can see uh, the city in the backdrop, it is a spectacular setting, of course Melbourne Park continues to be uh, transformed. Uh, as we're in the stage two with a stage three to come. So this precinct is going to be pretty spectacular over the next uh, decade or so as we gear up, of course, for the Australian Open, which is uh, not too far away. And uh, I just uh, drifted through before, Boyana, taking a look at the outside courts and obviously you know, gearing up and being set for the Australian Open, more additional seating. We know that a million people uh, flocked through this precinct uh, last year and the crowds are going to be enormous once again. Absolutely. I mean, the tournament gets bigger and better every year. They've taken away court six. They've put up a little bit of a hill. Mm. They've built a new walking bridge. I mean, the facilities are amazing and they've got some extra shading conditions, obviously re very hot or known to be very hot during the Australian Open. And uh, Margaret Court obviously behind uh, court eight here. So look, I mean, it's just an amazing tournament. So much, so so much opportunity to come watch plays you don't normally get to see on those outside courts. Yep. And uh, look, it's just an exciting time of the year here in Melbourne. No doubt. Great to have you with us wherever you might be viewing uh, right around the world, taking our pictures here from Melbourne Park. And if you're local, well, entry is free if you want to get down and watch uh, the ladies' semi-finals uh, today. Of course, we'll have the men's final coming up tomorrow. And we are going to chat to uh, the two combatants uh, throughout the day, JP Smith and Omar Jasika. That'll be a fantastic final tomorrow. Of course, JP normally uh, peaks at this time yep. of the year, so he's in very familiar surrounds. Absolutely, and what an um, what you know, he's taken out the number one seed. Had a tough four set match yesterday. He will be joining us soon. So if you do have any questions, make sure you hashtag AO Playoff for JP Smith and Omar Jasika a little bit later on. So listening on the coin toss. Choosing the other end. Mm. So just 17 years of age, uh, Jamie Fullis from Victoria. Of course, had that uh, big breakthrough win in Perth. Yep. Of course, in uh, February of this year, winning the ITF event, which she had to come from qualifying. And that really oh. really put her onto the big stage, didn't it? People started to uh, take notice of the name Jamie Fullis. Well, she had a little bit of an injury at the end of uh, twenty. 15 and then to come through qualifying win a number of matches in a row against some big players up on the you know the women's tour 
at such a young age was very impressive. Working with Betty Sekolovsky here in Melbourne at the National Tennis Centre. Done some fantastic work with Jamie. And then she's just carried on her winning ways and has really made a name for herself this year. So the girls are hitting up here on a beautiful day. As Porch said, 21 degrees in uh, Melbourne, so perfect uh, tennis conditions. And uh, the first of our ladies' semi-finals coming up very shortly, Olivia Chandramulia and uh, Jamie Foolis. But uh, we did mention, of course, uh, the men's final uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, Omar Yusika and, of course, JP Smith, who's been good enough to join us uh, right off the top here. Uh, JP, uh, nice to have you in. Guys, nice, thanks for having me back. Well, you... Uh, as we said, you normally uh, normally peak at this time of the year. I mean, for uh, the amount of years I've been covering this tournament, um, you've found your way more often than not to be at the business end. Yeah, it's been a few years. Uh, I've been in the semi-finals quite a bit, and then 2004 to make the final. Um, also heartbreak at Otomo in five sets, um, and it's good to be back again this year. So Tough match yesterday against Blake Mott. Three really close sets. You had a couple of opportunities or set points in that third set, in the in, around the near end of that set and then Blake got on top of you but you got off to a flying start in the fourth did you just feel like he sort of after you got that break early in the fourth you kind of could carry that through yeah like um, especially in the second and third set I had a lot of break points and came with some big shots there was a net court at one point where I could have served it out the second and uh, again in the third set he came with the volley that caught the edge of the line I just missed a passing shot down the line by you know maybe an inch or two um, and then yeah then he ended up getting the third set in a break and then you know, I just kind of went, uh, changed, uh, changed my shirt, my pants, and then um, just had a little, um, you know, a little mental, uh, little recovery out there, and then, you know, came out, broke straight up, and then uh, didn't lose a game after that. I think I served, I think I maybe missed maybe one or two serves in that uh, four set, so. so must very well yesterday, must be happy. Yeah, yeah. really happy with that. You, so, uh, you certainly earn your spot, don't you? I mean, this is tough competition. It simulates yeah. the conditions of the Australian Open. Best of five, and we've seen Whittington go out as a top seed. Uh, Sam Groth, as we know, and you know, a couple of really tough five setters he played uh, this week. Uh, Marenko, who you know has come back to play the playoff this year, uh, been knocked out as well. So there's always some unpredictability about this week. And you know, when you look at the 16 who start the tournament, there's not too many that haven't got a show. Yeah, um, as you see, all the seeds were basically knocked out. Um, one, two, three, and four um, before the semi-finals. So, just goes to show you the depth of Australian tennis right now, and uh, the fact that uh, you know anyone can win this tournament. And um, during this part of the year, obviously, it's very big with um, you know get that uh, training base in, get that uh, match play in. I think uh, people who do well here end up usually having a good summer as well. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, tomorrow will be another good match, and hopefully. Um, yeah, just leave it all out there for yeah. both of us. So we'll We've been in this position before. Would you say 2014? Yes, 2014. You're back here at 2016. Omar Yusika. He's been in some pretty good form. I mean, yesterday he was out there and, and did what he had to do. But uh, talk a little bit about your match tomorrow and how you go about it. Yeah, he was done. I didn't even... I basically, by the time I got off the court, had a little something to eat, and then, you know, just kind of recovered a bit. He was done. Yeah, and very quick. I was very <laughs> surprised about the scoreline. I thought uh, Connell... That would have been a really good, uh, juicy matchup right there. But, um, you know, to his credit, he must be playing really good tennis. And I think tomorrow's just going to be just as hard. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, physically he'll be pretty pretty uh, fresh after the, yesterday. And I think, um, you know, confident-wise, he's quite high. Is it different playing a left-hander? I haven't played left-hander in quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be tricky to start, I think. Uh, I don't think... Well, he hasn't played any lefties either. So, no. um, yeah, we're in for a treat tomorrow. Should be a beauty, and uh, you'll catch it live if you're not here, uh, streaming on tennis.com.au. The, the ebbs and flows of, you know, a tennis career. You're on the cusp of the top 100 at one stage, and, you know, it's tough competition out there. There's a lot of emerging players uh, coming wow. through. Where do, you, where do you think you're at, JP? You've got a lot of tennis, obviously, left in your uh, your career, and the great part about tennis is you can just play as long as you, uh, you like. <laughs> and you've got singles and doubles you obviously um, you contend with. But if you sort of, you know... You, has your perspective changed or your goal setting? Where, where do you think you're at in the journey of a, of a tennis player? Um, right now, for me, I think it's just all about man, just enjoying it more, uh, taking a lot less uh, pressure on myself. Um, you know, I'm at the point now, I'm 27. Yep. Um, surprisingly. Jeez. Yeah, I'm over the hill right Where's now. Where's the time gone? Come on, come on, come on <laughs> Seven, um, There's players playing now until they're uh, their 40s. Oh, yeah. Spring chicken. <laughs> Man, if I'm playing singles and I'm 40, you can, yeah, we'll talk then. But uh, no, um, obviously right now I'm at a point where I just want to, uh, you know, really enjoy it and 
you know, you know, we're obviously all very blessed to be able to play the sport and you know enjoy and play the slams and play every other event that um, you know people will always dream about playing. And um, you know, in perspective, I think the biggest thing you know now is just to you know give it your all, you know, because you know anything can happen, injuries, uh, you know, mm. any, any accidents can happen in this world, and so you just take it day by day and yep. just kind of enjoy everything and um, just. Well, that's about how I'd sum it up there. Plans for today? Just taking it nice and easy? Yeah, have a little white dabble and then, um, yeah, maybe we'll just look at the girls out here and yep. just get back there and just uh, kind of relax a little bit and just get ready for tomorrow. So it's hard to prepare for tomorrow. Well, I felt I, this was hard is sort of the pink elephant in the room, the wild card, guaranteed almost 35000 and it's an opportunity, obviously, to play in a main draw. How do you, for you, how do you sort of block that out and go go and just play play the match? Yeah, boys, haven't thought that, thought about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really, <laughs> you just can't think about that sort of stuff. Um, you know, I think two years ago I was thinking about it a little bit more. You know, getting a chance to play in the AO again, um, in the main draw. Uh, and, you know, obviously lost my seventh and fifth, and you know, could have gone my way, could have not gone my way, but yeah. Uh, as boys said, you just got to try and block it out and just uh, just kind of do what you've been doing the whole week and just routine-wise and just go back to that routine that you've set the whole week. Who do you like? I mean, I look at the 16 in the draw and we, this is, you know, covering tennis every week. We're following all these players on their uh, journey. Uh, some that, you know, we've seen at this, this event quite consistently over the years and there's a few new faces emerging. I mean, who do you like of the emerging crop of young Aussie players who are starting to announce themselves? I think there's a lot. I think um, Demna obviously shown a lot of potential in the last quarter of the year in Europe. Um, yep. You know, I think if you, if you can do well in Europe in those indoor challenges, I think you can do you know well anywhere in the world. Yep. Um, you also got uh, obviously the guys like Chris O'Connell's coming through, uh, Blake Mott, uh, Mark Pullman's, Purcell as well. You know, those sort of young uh, younger crew are uh, starting to show the stripes right now. So yeah, you know, I think it's going to be really exciting for Australian tennis coming up in the next couple of years. And maybe just talk about a little bit. How the importance of doubles for you? Won six doubles titles this year and three finals. How many finals did you make? Nine. Nine. How important is that for you to be able to back it up and, and keep playing singles and doubles? Yeah, I think doubles just gives you that mental break. Um, you know, I was a bit in Texas when, um, you know, just you know, just uh, using that ability to use oh, it as a practice instead of going out there and practicing again. You can just go out there and just play some doubles and enjoy it. And I've been playing with a good friend, Matt Reed, so that's always a lot of fun playing with him and just... You know, just obviously, um, you know, I want to try and get my doubles back into the slam level and obviously with my singles as well. But, you know, it, it always just helps get that extra balance of playing doubles. And does it help, obviously, with the singles game? Because you do like to serve volley a little bit. We saw that yesterday. You do come forward. Is that important for your singles game as well? Yeah, absolutely. And also with um, serving oh, as well, you know, you get the extra serving practice in yep. returning. And, um, yeah, I tend to return better from the uh, ad side just mainly because I play a lot of doubles out there as well. So I get that extra reps, so... It's a good start here from uh, Chami Fillers, who has uh, got some, I think it's, it should be Love 40, I think we're at now. So uh, three uh, break points uh, coming up here on the Chandra Millia serve. Quick yeah. start here. Have you had a chance to watch any of the women's singles this week? I have not, unfortunately. Potentially find a mixed doubles partner, JP, to sign <laughs> up with. All right, I've been asking. <laughs> 15. I said, don't worry, I've been asking. <laughs> I keep saying no. So still a couple of break points here for uh, Jamie Fulis, who is, uh, well, she's not just pick here, JP. She's a big fan of Jamie. I've seen Jamie play a bit uh, in Ilkley this year. Mm -hmm. She was there for the um, 50,000 up there for the girls. Four. That forehand was so dangerous against Roddy Nova Thursday. It's a little bit of striking on his shoulder, boys. Any news about that? Yeah. Uh, by by Sparia? Jamie? Yeah. She wore that on uh, Thursday, so. Yeah, could we and played three sets, so. I'm not too sure if it's anything too serious. I don't know if you had the inside word or not. No. Game so there is uh, the first break of serve in this women's semi-final. Jamie Fullis on the board at uh, one game to love. JP Smith is with us here in our commentary box, playing in the final of the wildcard uh, playoff here uh, tomorrow. So how far 
can you sort of plan your schedule for 2017? Obviously, the focus right now is on the Aussie summer and uh, giving it everything. Yeah, um, obviously, win the wildcard, you kind of free up another week there. You don't have to play Australian for qualifying. So, um, you know, winning here, you get the opportunity to play Sydney, uh, which would be a huge event, I think. Um, get some more matches in. And then, you know, looking ahead after the Aussie, it kind of really depends how those upcoming weeks go with, um, you know, obviously, how many matches you can get in, where you want to, you know, sort of play. Obviously, if you have a good Australian Open, then you just freeze up a couple Jamie of weeks to take break and just uh, yeah. get some more base training in and whatnot, rest even. Yep. So. Remember, if you do have any questions for JP Smith, hashtag AO Playoff. It's an off bird right there. <laughs> So Jamie Phillips with a chance here to hold her opening service game and get off to a good start. As we've seen, beautiful conditions. Slides. It is. Zephyr of a breeze. But Just walking over here. Just want to stay outside. What's uh, Bob's, uh, what's uh, weatherman Bob said? Has he looked ahead to the Australian Open? What it looks like? Pleasant. Predicting very hot conditions. <laughs> Love 15. We're okay. We, we, li we live in air conditioning for two weeks. <laughs> We're very lucky. <laughs> This is your office the next two weeks here yeah. in the Aussie, huh? Not bad, this is it? not bad, yeah. yeah. It's the biggest TV screen I've ever seen. Oh, it's fantastic. I missed the thin shed, you know. <laughs> Fifteen up. Nice serve there. I was talking about those those younger players, JP, that are emerging on the tour. Do they, they pick your brains as someone a little bit older and a little bit more seasoned on the tour? No, not really. No, no I'm not that very... I've only been on this tour for five years now, so That's true. I mean, they've probably been as long as I have now. Well, a lot of them anyway, not always not the, mm. the really young ones, but... There you go. Saw Paul Aiken out there I supporting did. you. I did. Paul took us to the World University Games in Belgrade. Yes, he's a great man, Paul. 2009. Nine, yep. Yep. One of your biggest supporters, JP. <laughs> there was some uh, footage. He was uh, flexing the guns uh, yeah. yesterday, yeah. Uh, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes had guns out, huh? Yeah. He was trying to stay off camera, but always <laughs> finds his way on camera. Right, well, he's a great dude, Paulie. <laughs> biggest mistake he made was not preparing me and Bodge in the mixed doubles there at the World University Games. Would have brought him home a gold medal for that. Uh, he'll be listening, so keep going. Anything you, <laughs> anything you want to? Uh, I'll make sure I message him, put him after. <laughs> Forty, thirty. That's good. It's good that you've been getting a crowd out here for some little playoff matches, which is good. Well, it's, uh, I mean, I've been doing this event for a number of years. I mean, what you, you participated yeah. in it. It's a great week to come down before the hustle and bustle of the Australian Open, just to sit and park yourself and look at... Um, Emerging the, talent. Exactly. That we hear, yeah, yeah. you know, you might hear about their names on the tour all year, you're following results, you should get to watch them in person and game look at their game. Fawless leads yeah, two games to love. Well, of course, have basically a lot of matches. You even get some of the 16s going to run around right now as well, so mm -hmm. it was good to... Plenty of tennis around. We saw Lane Hewitt, Stolps, uh, Peter Luchak in the crowd. They have a word to any of have any of them had a word to you or, or said passed any comments? Uh, yeah, uh, the, I walked by them yesterday after the match and they said congrats and yep. you know good luck for the next one. Um, so yeah, just uh, you know it's good that they're all out here watching and supporting the tennis, supporting the event, which I think is really great for it. It's good to have it's good to have those sort of uh, echelon of players out here. Just yeah, they've really been here all week yeah, watching exactly. pretty much all the matches. It's great to see. It's good. I mean, you're, you're well travelled. Is there is there a place? I mean, you obviously you, you go back to some repeat tournaments uh, across the journey, and then new ones that uh, pop up. Is there a place around the world you've been to where it's just left you a little bit gobsmacked? Just the the crowd support or the real interest? Yeah, a lot of events are really well run. Um, 
like I've always loved playing in Texas. They have a couple of challenges there. They're really well supported, and the yep. crowd's really good after that. Um, also, Newport Beach, the Tennis Hall of Fame up there in um, yeah. Rhode Island. Uh, that's one of the best ones as, as well, you know. Yep. Tennis Hall of Fame being out there, and they always have the inductee ceremony. Yep. So last that's year it. was uh, Marin Saffin. He got it, uh, yeah. inducted in there. Um, so, you know, it was always good. Just so the, like those sort of events, and obviously all the slams are very well supported. And, uh, so those are the events I like to get back to a lot. So. Yeah, no doubt. Question from Lisa Grace. What's it like for JP to play a formal double, doubles partner in Omar Yusika? And who are you planning on playing doubles with in the AO? So you said Matt Reed. Love 30. In the AO. Yes. And uh, I've played Omar a couple of times. Yeah. Um, We've had actually a little bit of that this week in the women's draw. Doubles players playing against each other, uh, each other in singles. So yeah. for you, you could play. Well, we've only played twice. Uh, we won a round here, Omar and I. Um, that was two years ago, and then this year we made the quarterfinals in Miami. We actually beat some good teams there, yep. um, the Master Series. So we actually Is played. That where you had a highlight shot or yes. a highlight rally? Yes. Okay. When it was windy and I couldn't put an overhead away, <laughs> and the sun was in my eye, and then, <laughs> and then yeah, the final point, Omen was going to hit it. Then he left it for me, and I just kind of like drop shot it, just just went over the net. Yeah. That that was a social <laughs> media hit. Yeah. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> be modest. <laughs> Anyways, talking about your doubles partner, you're going to play him tomorrow. Yeah, playing right. Oh, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. Obviously, we're, we're good friends and we've known each other for a few years now. And um, you just got to try and block that out. Obviously, we're playing for the same prize, and um, you know, on court it's going to be a battle, and obviously, obviously off the court it's going to be, um, you know, we'll still be friends at the end of the day. I hope. So once again, good question uh, on that. Jamie Phillips Jamie with Phillips. a chance to uh, break, and she uh, does break. it again. So well, this is a great games. start to here, uh, Bodge. Three yeah. games to love. All one way of traffic right now. Well, Jamie uh, got off to a bit of a slow start in her quarterfinal quarterfinal match on Thursday. So, actually, she lost the first set and then found her form. Mm. So, for her, I think, obviously, try of how important a, a quick start is. Against uh, Kayla McPhee. Now, yep. we saw her on debut here last, last year, year at the playoff. Yep. What, what have you noticed about her 12 months on? Because she took a good skill last year at the playoff. Yeah, and did well at 18s last week. Yeah. Um, obviously took out Priscilla Hon first round. Yep. Looked very, very good athlete and she was impressive in that first set against Jamie. I think for her it's being able to maintain that level for two, three sets. Um, this experience you can't buy. So for her, still very young. Um, but yeah, a couple, couple of really good results and hopefully she can make a stance on the women's tour, tour next year. Mm. Betty Sekolovsky on screen. That's a Jamie Fuller's coach. Work with it. Yeah, met Betty a couple of times. She's really nice. Yeah. She's really uh, former player herself. Yeah. Oh, 15. Oh, these, these are new in here today. Oh, the peanut M&Ms. Yeah, yeah no, it's, a, it's a nice... Uh, They'll be finished by the end of the day, I assume. Nice little treat from uh, Bodge. She's pretty consistent in that regard. Always <laughs> oh, Bodge, you brought these in, did you? Bring some to the table every year after everyone. Right, right. Is that why they're on your side of the table? They're actually in front of you, JP. <laughs> <laughs> Just what you need before a, <laughs> a big match tomorrow. Love 30. Any other news? What's going on in the tennis world here? We have here in front of us. Oh, I read in the paper Flavia Panetta and oh, yeah, Fabio baby. Fognetti baby. are expecting. That's right. So there you go. Fognetta. That's gonna be one. That's gonna be one talented baby right there. <laughs> 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 Fognetta. I wonder what sport he's going into, huh? 
Passion of Fabio. <laughs> What's Flavia been doing? Uh, Bud, you've been Not following sure. her journey since she uh, really? pulled up stumps at the no. US Open. Probably just tra travelling with Fabio. Yeah. 15. Got married. 13. And because we thought Roberta Vinci was going to finish up at the end of this year, but she's going to go on again. Is she? Okay. Yeah. So she should be 34 next year. Still got the passion to play. That's yeah, good to see. Well, I mean, look at I mean, this is what I'm saying to you, Jamie. 27. I mean, Radek Stepanek's still going. He's 38. Tommy Haas. Yeah. I don't think he's totally done and dusted. He's probably just about. He, I know he's ended it on his protected this year for the Aussie Open. Yeah. So we'll see if he actually comes. In. Well, he's going to be the tournament director of Indian Wells. Exactly. So. Okay. 30. Yeah. He's been appointed. Yeah. You got big Evo Karlovic still going at what 37? Yeah, Evo still knocking him around. Early days. Forty. Is the Australian Open still doing that mixed doubles wildcard playoff thing? No. Oh, they can did they? Yep. And they okay. just did the women's doubles playoff okay. finals yesterday. Yeah, so I saw a bit of pictures of the final because I was uh, warming up because I was following that match. So. Talk us through the uh, band that you're wearing around your wrist. The left, hand, left hand or right hand? The right, the right hand. On oh, the right hand? Yeah, it's just a little black band I like to wear. It's just uh, my yeah. birth year on it. The just, initials uh, TS 1989. That just sounds familiar. Yeah, it's I've seen that before. A little black. Um, you know, I just like to keep it on my hands. You know, it feels a little bit you know, almost naked without, without wearing yep. it, you know. So. Yes, wonder, what does that sound for? Um, Tom Shollins. Um, one of my really good friends. Do you know Taylor Swift has an album called 1989? What? No, I've never heard of that. Okay. Really? I just thought maybe that was that. Well, is, he, is he the same birth year as I? Well? Yeah. You're a massive fan. <laughs> no, no idea. It's a great educational session here right now. <laughs> yeah, guys, tune in for pop culture. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of concerts, do um, you want to put Coldplay? No, did I didn't. Did anyone get a Coldplay in Melbourne? How was it? Last Saturday night. I heard it was unreal. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I re the clock. <laughs> Got about 20 years younger <laughs> down there at Grand Level. Oh, Grand Level, nice. Yeah. Well, the last concert I went to, 15 and <laughs> so this is a bit embarrassing to admit actually, was 1927. You, you, probably, you both probably weren't born, I'm a little bit older. 1927? That, that was the name of the band. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Festival Hall, the old Festival Hall okay. here never in Melbourne. Nah, no, never heard of it. Okay. Yeah. What, what year was that? 25 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> 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 what, you, what was your last concert? My last concert? Uh, let me think about that. 15 or? When did you go to see Five Fifth Summer? Who are you in New Bodge? Current uh, time. I've got tickets to Adele next year. Right. That'd be good at him. Jamie Phyllis uh, in. Good nick at the moment. Three games to one in this opening set of his tuning in to the uh, 2017 Australian Open Wildcard Playoff semi-final day. I think it might have been Robbie Williams, my last one. Yeah. Did you get a Perth, did he? Yeah. Corner. Maybe one more question for you, JP, before we let you go. Hit me. The fifth set in 2014 was brutal for you and Jordan Thompson with cramping. How do you, how do you plan to avert that this year? Um, oh, just win, just win or lose in three sets. Nah, um, 
<laughs> I just uh, obviously you stay hydrated. Obviously, that time um, of the year was a hot day. I remember that. Um, you know, on a cloud in the sky. You know, we'll find the girls' match. We got on. A, we got on about one one o'clock. Um, cool, can't imagine what the core temperature was, but I know that. Uh, what time did you get done that day? About five thirty, around yep. five thirty ish. Yep. After that, you know, we, we managed to stumble off the court then. Um, yeah, because we were both physically exhausted after that. Um, so yeah, just obviously stay hydrated and just um, you know, obviously put the right yeah, food on your body. Do what you can just to um, uh, stay fresh. Bonus you know, leads so. three games to two. Mike, great of you to stop by. Uh, good luck. It's been awesome. Tomorrow, yeah, JP. Thanks. See you guys out there, huh? Look forward to uh, a great match between you and uh, me in Omar there. Isika. There he is, JP Smith. And it's been a good fight back here from Olivia Chandramulia. After Jamie Fullis won the uh, first three games of this uh, first semi final, she's uh, just slowly but surely worked her way back into the contest here. Olivia just struggling to find her forehand. That was a huge weapon against Arena Rodinova. Really big forehand, but sometimes can go missing. But especially in these last two games, she's found her form back. And now this is where it gets interesting. Big moment for both these two players. Olivia on screen there, of course, taking at the top seed this week, Arena Rodinova. When you look at the rankings of all the players in the women's draw, she was a standout inside that top 200 arena. Time. But uh, rankings can be thrown out the window. Absolutely. Particularly this week when there's so much at stake. There's always been upsets in the history of the playoff. Jimmy Phyllis looking for an important hold here just to restore a little bit of order. Such a uh, great start. Following this semi final, we'll have Abby Myers and uh, Alison By. The second seed here. Myers, the only unseeded player of the four remaining. Of 30. Yep. Out there on court. This game is certainly turned. I mean, she's finding a good range on yep. her forehand. Chandra Milling was seen fullest with a few unforced errors on hers. So a big chance here for Olivia with three break points to get this back to three all. Forced here on that uh, forehand three for Jamie games. Also three all now in this uh, opening set. 
women's semi-final day here of the Australian Open uh, playoff, and uh, it's, it's, it could be an arm wrestle from here, Botch. Oh, for sure, BP. I mean, great start from Jamie, off to a three-love lead, but obviously Olivia's maybe got rid of some of the nerves. She has been hitting the ball very well. Played at this wild card playoff a number of times, so yeah. maybe a little bit more experience at yep. this stage too. Yep. Fifteen love. That wind really swirling around, of course. With the courts we're using for the playoff and open to the elements. Tough week of competition here at Melbourne Park to get into that first Grand Slam. 30, love. Got the line there, Jamie, but right on it. Pretty close. Well, for those that haven't been to Melbourne, this is what can happen in the space of about half an hour, Butch. <laughs> Blue skies can turn a little bit grey. We are expecting a possible shower today, so we might have a little interruption or two. Probably have a bit of sun come out. Four seasons of one day right here in Melbourne. That's a great show. Yeah. Yeah. Third. Well, it's moved nicely into that return. Body weight moving forward. It's a fine shot from Olivia Chandramulia. Shot of the day so far. And, uh, well, she's peeled off Andrew four consecutive four games, games here to turn this first set around. See some light rain. That's a shot that you just love to play as a and tennis player. If you can execute it, the fine like margins. Well, I mean, I, I look at this like three all 40-30 and to be able to produce a backhand when she wasn't necessarily in position mm. and to hit a clean winner off that, that shows confidence. Yep. So, great fight back from Olivia Trangemolia. So, Jamie Fuller's with some work to do at the sit-down. Just to reset. Playing Time. at the top level this year, played in the qualifying event in Sydney and at the Australian Open. We talk about those types of matches as well and the experience. It all comes into effect when you're playing at tournaments like these. Yep. Join the conversation. Any of your own observations? So hashtag AO Playoff. 
viewing our live stream wherever you might be taking our coverage right around the world. New balls. Love 15. So just trying to get some control back here, Jamie Fuller. So those unforced errors certainly have racked up in the last few games. Jamie Ramilia with a good first serve percentage and good control off the ground. Like Jamie Fullis needs to use against Tranjamulia. Getting her moving out wide to the forehand side on the stretch. Tranjamulia very good when the ball's in her hitting zone. Back this year to do this tournament, you know, look through the field and begin to see 12 months on you know, the progress of a lot of players and where they're at. Who's sort of who's impressed you that okay they haven't got through to this stage of the yep. tournament that has shown a little bit from what you've seen sort of 12 months ago? Wind uh, picking up, so Jamie just uh, taking your time here on serve. Skies above. Fifteen, forty. Well, while actually, a few things stand out. You've got the emergence of uh, a couple of ladies in college. Yep. So LM Perez, Belinda Woolcock, um, Perez at the University of Georgia, Woolcock at the University of Florida. Two outstanding schools. Um, you look at their results throughout the college, their college years. Um, they're both ranked. Their team's doing great. Uh, so they're very good. I mean, Perez won the wild card. Jamie, uh, we're going to have to US play. Open. Yep. So I really like uh, them still having the opportunity to play at the wild card playoff. It's uh, gone just a little bit pear shaped for Jamie at the five moment. Games to three. Serve a little bit wild and woolly. So, this has uh, been an amazing comeback from Olivia Chandramilia. Five consecutive games and a chance here to take out the opening set. And then I think Arena has had, Roddy Nova's had a very, very good year. Quarterfinals uh, in the doubles with her sister at the start of the year. Mm. Won, you know, won some tournaments, made finals, semi finals, has got her ranking inside top 200. Played at the Olympics, Fed, now she's part of the Fed Cup team. Love 15. And then, you know, still like the emerging younger names. Tomic looks a lot fitter this year, so she's worked as hard as she possibly could this year. Nag the Baines. Abby's always done well at the end of the year, and she's into the semi finals. Maddie Inglis, unfortunately, a little bit ill, but she's had a full year on the tour. Yep. Probably maybe hasn't had her best year, but I think next year, once she's got that year of experience, look out for her. Oh, there's a shot. I loved it. That's much better from Jamie as what she was doing in the early part of this match. And then you've got these two ladies on screen. Jamie winning her first pro circuit. Olivia hitting a very good ball. Yeah. Obviously had a, having the opportunities at the start of the year. Both around, you know, within the 400 just inside that 450 mark. Covering 
Hawks ground. Uh, both players 15, there well, by Chandra Mullia. We just need that breakthrough, don't you? When we saw well, Jamie that, win the yeah. ITF back in Feb, I think yep. she was somewhere around 900 yep. at that stage, which propelled her up the rankings. And then let's not forget um, Lizette Cabrera, who's had a very good end of the year. She's uh, been granted a wild card into the Australian Open. Destiny A. Ava. Oh, this story. So, yeah. good few names there. Everyone's got their own little story, which I love as well. Yep. And I guess for all of them, it's about being able to do it consistently now. They've all had their own mini breakthroughs yep. at a tournament or at the end of the year. For them to continue building on that ranking, it's about doing those results consistently throughout the year. Yeah, different journey for everyone, isn't it? I mean, Alison by 26, yeah. you know, she's had to be on tour for a long time, grinding away, and she's within maybe a couple of games of you know, her first ever Australian Open at 26, possibly. while she was playing, so it's done it 15, the hard 40. way. Yeah. Very well in doubles. So now Foolis with a chance to stay alive in this first set. Couple of big forehands in this game. Ben Julia leads Mulia five games to four. Signs off in style for this opening set. Quite amazing. Reeled off six games on the trot to take it. Six games to three. Uh, five games to four. Us. My apologies. Okay, I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was in. Right no, I just missed. Apologies. Got a bit excited. <laughs> so Jamie just hangs in in this first set. Lost of games in a row. Doesn't necessarily always have to be pretty. It's just about trying to win that last point. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> Time. Has uh, gone away for the moment, which is good. Winked about, but chance here for uh, us to get it back to five all on serve. Oh, good running, retrieving 15. from Fullis. Very good athlete. Tranjamulia play one extra shot. Fifteen all. Good depth from Tranjamulia. Ball's coming in pretty quick. Mm. There's a good vision there of mm. how quick that ball does come in. And that's the next level. The girls hit it harder. They hit it deeper, being able to absorb the pace.
30, 15. Started to work very nicely, but Bullis lost her way for a little bit. So we've got to back on song. Forty fifteen. Sometimes when you're a parent. Game Fullis. So Jamie Fullis gets it back to five, five all. Games on. This uh, topsy turvy opening set is a genuine arm wrestle right here. It'll be tough to call. Jamie doing a good job of. Making Trangemolia play that one extra shot. And there's Alison Bly's father on screen. <coughs> His daughter will be playing next. In the other semi final match between Alison Bly and Abby Myers. Fifteen. Fifteen. Thirty. this set will go. Yeah, plenty of 
ebbs and flows, that is for sure. But a big opportunity here for Fulis if she can just get some good returns back. Four. And the Chandra Millia serve, unfortunately, Four, just uh, letting it down. Five. Jamie Fulis with a chance to come out and uh, serve for the opening set. <coughs> Jamie Fuller has put herself in a winning position earlier on in this first set where she led three love. Trangemolia fought her way back, but it is Fuller with an opportunity now to close out this first set. She'll be serving at six. Fifteen lot. They know. The happening was here. A few point hard earned here in the first of the semi finals. Thirty. Fifteen. Forty. <laughs> this is a tough one to call. The tiebreak could be uh, fitting, Bodge. Absolutely. Both have had their moments. They've dominated parts of this set.
a beautiful yes. shot. It's a back to juice. on your screen there from uh, Victoria so on home soil 425 in the world Olivia Chandravilli at 483 currently so not a lot separating these two Whoa. their journey on the WTA tour two year differential in age advantage Andrew Mulia Good rally from both ladies. Yes. Tug of war here. That's good to watch. Manage force. Game there it is set. for Jamie Furless. Furless. She's got there. Seven games to five. Tough work in this first set. Three love start was pegged back, but eventually has been able to get the job done. Seven games to five here in the first of the ladies' semi finals. She was made to work for it, Jamie. Really hard to tell who was going to become victory, victorious on that first set, but uh, Jamie started well at three love. Olivia came back and won five straight games, <coughs> put herself in the winning position to win the first set at five three, and then Jamie won the next four games. So just found her range again. Yep. Saw a few unforced errors on the forehand through the middle part. Uh, girls on the rise as tennis players. Good ball strikers. Remember, if you do want to join in on the conversation, hashtag AO Playoff. We will have Omar Yasika joining us a little bit later on. We'll be playing off in the men's singles final tomorrow against John Patrick Smith. Time. So if you do you have any questions? Hashtag AO Playoff. If you're close by, entry is free if you want to come down and watch uh, the semi finals today. Finals Second tomorrow. Seconds. Andrew Mooley up to serve. So back out again, in and out, as it often is the case here in Melbourne.
control on that forehand. Off. So we're going to have a Busic steps out. Sean Manawira steps in. BP. See ya. This has been a very close 10 set, but good on Jamie Fullis. Mm. Get her nose in front now in this more important semi final. Certainly early on, we thought she might really just race away after such a, a dominant start and three games to love. Shot Chandra Mulia, but not quite executing that one just a little wide. The positive thing is in that quarterfinal she played, she got off to a really poor start, was yeah. able to bounce back, so good she was able to bounce back after the challenge. Fifteen fine shot 40. from Fulis. strikers we have to say Fulis certainly just has that ability just a little bit harder a bit flatter goes through the court pretty quick good control game for us so as you can see a first uh, break first of game. serve that's a good positive second. start In his second set she's already got to set up her sleeve Hashtag AO Playoff to join the conversation. It is the first of the ladies' semi-finals here at Melbourne Park for the 2017 Wildcard Playoff. One moment, Sean, we think it's a summer's day, then we think we're in the middle of June. It's uh, well, extraordinary. I mean, we're, we're so used to seeing it in the same day. I mean, it just is. over the course of the tournament, we've seen the first two days over 30. We've seen the last couple of days uh, sorry, the following couple of days then in the low 20s. Yesterday was about right, 26 degrees, mm. but then a rain delay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so strange. No, that's what we love about Melbourne, isn't it? Very unpredictable, yeah. that's right. On and off the court. I did about that. Fifteen love. Love. Good thing, BP, is that we've spoken about this at the start of the event, and I'm sure you and Bodge have already mentioned it, but fullest 17, Chandra Mulia at 19, Destiny Ava winning her spot in the doubles and also the singles at 16, yep. who in Australian women's tennis is going to take it by the scruff of the throat, announce themselves on the big stage, mm. and all these players seem to be doing that. 40 love. You're right, absolutely. We, we have to be patient. It's uh, it's a long journey, particularly at 17, 19. We you know, mentioned Alison Bayer at 26 and how long she's had to you know, really apply her trade on the tour. Uh, tough years. She's been high ranked as 305, so it's not an easy journey. She can, as the highest seeded player of the remaining four, she can get through at 26. 40, Everyone's got their own story. It was good to chat to her too the other day to listen to what she's been doing off the tennis court and she's done a commerce degree and really setting herself up for a life outside of tennis. But mm. I mean, at the same time, like you said, you just got to be patient with some players. Yeah. Certainly, in until you're at that third. sort of 150 stage, I mean, you 
want to be sort of make sure that you've got a couple other things to have up your sleeve as a tennis player because it is tough working your way through and getting to that stage where you're playing in bigger tournaments, earning more prize money and helping with all the, the travel costs that go with it. So massive commitment. It needs to be a plan B or just, you know, something you can have to fall back on. First set. See with a chance to be in exactly the same position she was in the opening set. <laughs> Game four. She does hold convincingly. So leads. two games to love. Two games to love. She's taken the first set seven games to five. We do know that Trangemulia can get out of very tough, very sticky situations as she did against the number one seed in the previous round. So this is far from over. But Foolis is in such a commanding position right now. Fifteen love. Chandra Millier. So we are building up to the Australian Open. You can follow all the tennis news. Australian Open on Twitter and Instagram and hashtag AO Playoff for this week. On the Facebook page. Better signs 15, there for Trangemulia. I was going to say that. I mean, she needs to keep that ball away from the forehand of Jamie yeah. Fools right now. Yeah. And at the very least, have her move on that forehand. Get her on the stretch. Don't let her plant her feet absolutely unleash. Yep. Still better signs for Trangemulia. Nice long rally. Jacket here, there. The also, see a little bit of the wind is wreaking a bit of havoc. Under my chair, yeah, we just saw some uh, vision before the, the trees yes, around yeah. Melbourne Park. Thank you. Nice slow down on serve at times, but even midpoint, as we just saw. Forty third. There, BP, as you mentioned.
Yeah, well played. Nicely done by Jamie Fullis. Yes. See just how wide she gets her feet, Jamie Fullis, yeah. and just can really unleash. Of course, just that leg drive is so powerful. And just the pace of shot is so is just troubling, Chandramulia. Advantage Tandra Mulli. Game, Chandra Mulia. That's an important uh, hold here for Chandra Mulia. Fawless leads two games to one. Still, Jamie with the break at two games to one. Semi final day here of the Australian Open 2017 playoff. Still got uh, Abby Myers and Alison Bye to come a little bit later on. Myers, uh, the only unseated player left at the quartet today. Change I mean, it is very hard when the wind is wreaking havoc like this. If a player such as Jamie Fullis has got such pace <coughs> on that shot, you hope for the errors mm. because, of course, sometimes when players hit with that much pace, they don't maybe have a lot of top spin on the ball. They don't have a lot of margin. Jamie Fullis is clearly hitting her spots absolutely brilliantly. Time. So maybe what Change Bullia needs to do is just drop in a few off-pace shots. Get some slices in there. Try and find the perfect opportunity to play some drop shots to move her opponent up. And yep. then yep. She, she did well in some parts in that last game to move her opponent full of side to side. And that was when you saw maybe full of overplaying, mm. overhitting. I was talking about that wide stance she takes. If you're rushing an opponent and they need to take that sort of wide stance, that's what you need to do. You need to rush them. So to get in this match, Stay in there with the chance. Change of Mulia, that's just what she needs to do. Rush her opponent. in love. Thirty Again, just to try and get back in this match, you cannot afford to be allowing errors off the first strike. You've got to get into the rallies. If your opponent beats you, okay, too good.
Nautilus knew exactly what her opponent was doing. She put a bit Force more, a bit more on it. Yeah. Deep uh, second serve. See, they're just picking up the vibration dampener that spun off or got smacked out of the strings. This is good awareness from Jamie Fullis. Yeah. Really good awareness from the young 17-year-old. Really announced herself back in Feb this year, winning that ITF event in Perth and made a quarter final in Mildura and just been building and building. Game Fullis. So that is a big hold here for Jamie Fullis. Fullis. So three, three games to one. one. Critical position is the opening set. All change, please. Can she power on from here? Or will Chandra Billia find another gear again to get herself back into this match? Hashtag AO Playoff. I think Ron, uh, you might have just missed uh, JP. Obviously, he was in a little bit earlier some insights into the final uh, coming up tomorrow. His favourite play in history was. Yeah. Well, I'll tell I you what. I speak for him, but maybe a left-hander. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not to volley. Not to serve. What his favourite female player is. We'll uh, see if we can find out and track him down uh, there, Ron. Love the, the slice, young uh, JP Smith. It does. Like a Steffi Graf or something like yeah. that. Yeah. We'll track him down. Fifteen See the uh, strapping on Jamie Fullis' right arm there, BP, when we spoke to her, she did mention that she had to deal with some injuries this year. Yeah. However, I think that's one of those strappings that sort of, it makes the injury look a bit worse than what it actually is. So I don't think too much concern there. Really. Today it hasn't... Ah! It hasn't uh, 30, been a concern at all the way she's no. playing. First two sets, of the similarities are quite remarkable. Just generally a chipping away and a few errors off the fullest forehand, then it clicks into gear for a, a period. With the wind, good return. Sorry, that serve. Right, just, just yeah, not not too much on it. No, just popping up in the hitting zone for Jamie Fullis. Really needs to go a bit wider. It's hard with this with this wind.
fine line. She probably knew that as well from the previous point. But then trying to go for too much. Thinking that she needs to put a little bit more on it. And the air is drawn. Yes. <laughs> Advantage, Tandra Mulia. See that every point now she's winning, she's just trying to egg herself on. Change her bully up. Yes. Advantage, Tandra Mulia. Just at 483 currently. Has been as high as 361, Tandra Mulia. So, imagine that tough win against Roddy and over. Just playing it point by point. Just Two down on herself. Game, Tam Dramulia. Yeah, she just hangs in again in this uh, second set. Fullis leads to maybe turn things around. Shoot. So, big service game coming up for Jamie Fullis. Just mentioned the match between Roddy Unova and Chan Dramulia BP. I mean, also, Fullis came off a, a big match as we see our following one after this will be the second semi-final, Abby Myers versus Alison Bai, number two seed. But Jamie Fullis, of course, came off a, a big three-setter. However, yep. the contrast with, was that the second set, uh, sorry, the third set was 6-1 versus Chandra Mullias against Roddy Nova. Third set, 7-5. Yeah. So the difference in play clearly from that last uh, moment is maybe Jamie Fullis could be that touch fresher. Just time. Like it all clicks into gear for, for Jamie Fullis. She's just a little bit better off the ground. It's small margins. Two years younger in the cycle. Yeah, free of charge. Uh, head on down. Tennis to be played today. Australian Open 2017 wildcard playoffs. It's a good I love point 15. right there. It's the fight here of Chandra Millia. You can see the difference in that BP, just yep. moving Fullis around. It's amazing the shot that comes back when you're able to get your opponent to move around a bit. So really well done there from the 19 year old. Fifteen oh. Nothing you can do about that. And his precision serving. Oh. 
Forty-fifty. He just at the start of this game, just when he thought Chandramulia had a slight window, just lets herself down with the last couple of points. Yeah, it's a big hold here. Times a little bit of control in this battle of the baseline. Is an important Wallace hold. Leads four games. Jamie Fullers to get two. to four-two in this second set. Already set up her sleeve and getting close, possibly to the finish line. Let's see, we're very much in 2017 mode. BP, the tennis balls with the the new logo on them, dude. A O. Oh, I just came for a. Uh, walk across the new bridge uh, today which is sensational linking up the city to Melbourne Park was it open oh, there's a few bridges I think that's the right bridge <laughs> no, it's not a bridge but I, I wasn't think. sure if it was open yes. well I was on a bridge oh okay yeah maybe the uh, Look, maybe the signs that said don't walk <laughs> here had blown away in the wind <laughs> how is the bridge well it held up okay yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm here <laughs> And very quickly it would be. That's good. From the city. Yeah. Nets! Someone timed Press it seven. in a three minute walk. The lower terrace of Birrung Mar to Melbourne Park. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. Right. right now, that's the art uh, record. I need to ramp that up a bit. <laughs> the Tandurum Bridge. There you go. It's called BP. Thank you. Yes. So it's fantastic to see uh, this precinct continue to evolve. Yeah, I've seen special comments right there from Olivia Chandrabilia. You can hear her just say, just get closer to the ball. She feels that she's just snatching at that forehand, at those shots. Signs here. The last foot. I've seen that sort of shot a couple of times. The backhand down the line on the juice side, a yeah. very difficult shot yep. to play, but when played well, absolutely deadly. A chance here. Three break points. Oh, no, it's just gone from side to side, not missing by much. Fifteen foot.
and there Force. it is. So a chance now to come out Force and lead serve for the match for Jamie Fulis. Final spot beckons here for the 17 year old Jamie Fullis. She'll have an opportunity now to send herself one step closer. One step closer to the final. Uh, Brett, there's just the, the bridge that you took. Mm -hmm. Okay, is, it is open. Yeah, all right, all right. that was good. <coughs> okay. Well, I didn't time it at three minutes, but. <laughs> Wasn't in a hurry. Yeah, that's fair enough. Might have to venture out there and... Time. Have a look. Now, Boyana and I, we've been mm. on this the whole tournament. Yeah. The, the little grassy area that sort of protrudes out from the bridge, we assume very similar to one Henman Hill, or Murray's Mound as it's known yes. in uh, Wimbledon. Yeah. And we've been asking everyone on Twitter, using the hashtag AOPlayoff to give us their nominations and what we think it should be called. I don't know. We started off with Hewitt's Hill. We thought that was just an obvious I feel like it's got to have a Hewitt link. Yes, but there have been some great nominations I'll let you know about in the next few minutes. Okay. Bernie's Bank is one of them. <laughs> Love 15. It's a great feature for those that have been lucky enough to go to Wimbledon wander out there and you see a packed Rafters Ranch Rafters Ranch another one okay. shot these down Kyrgios's Rise I'll let that one sneak uh, sink in for you because there's a little play on words there well see if you can figure it out yeah I'll, I'm with you so it could fit nicely if he keeps uh if he keeps progressing where we he should get to. Oh, there's a good shot. Fullis. That wins some applause. That's the question, isn't it? Do you go do you go back generations or are we looking at the future here in the naming, so? Well only because it matches his name, but Marenko's Mountain had a good ring to it. Fortunately for him, losing in the first round of the wildcard playoffs. No. It's very much a seeker. See him tomorrow in action. Thirty. She's on song 50. now. Fullis. She can smell victory here. A spot in the final tomorrow. It's an unbelievable shot. 50. She's pulling out the big shots. When it counts, right here. A couple of match points. She match. does it. Fullis. She sets the love. 7-5. So Jamie Fullis has booked a spot in tomorrow's final here at the Australian Open 2017 playoff. A warm embrace at the net from both girls who know each other very well. Both ranked in the 400s on a journey to higher places. Jamie Fullis, the younger of the two at 17, now within a game making a Grand Slam debut and you can't wipe the smile off her face right now. Tough first set, she led three games to love and then uh, Chandra Millia was able to peel off five straight games. She restored order, Jamie Fullis won at 7-5 and then 
Got that early breaker serve in the second, able to power away and win really convincingly. Yeah, it's that sort of mental ability to get out of that predicament in the first set. And what we have actually seen in this entire tournament on the men's and women's side, BP, is uh, a player that wins that first set or gets on that run of games and all of a sudden just drops the bundle. And we've seen so many three-set matches on the women's side or five sets in the men's. So for Jamie Fullers to win that set and then to just power on in a big way in the second, it was uh, very impressive to watch. And like you said, from a 17-year-old, quite young. Yep. And um, we look forward to seeing what she can produce against the winner of this upcoming match, Abby Myers and Alison Bai. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be a great battle. Of course, Myers at 600 in the world. And uh, Ellison are just outside the top 400 at 410. So both have played a lot of tennis uh, this year here and across the globe. Uh, Myers, of course, having knocked off a couple of seeds in uh, Baines and Patterson on the way to this semi final. And uh, for Ellison Bayer, knocked out Sarah Atomic, of course, in the last round. She legs Savinos, 6 3, 6 4. And for Alison Bay and Abby Myers, I mean, they, they actually know each other. Um, a fair bit. We did speak to Alison, and I mean, I asked the question without really expecting a response. Saying in the Nate the Baines and Abby Myers match, who would you would, who would you rather prefer to yep. play? Yep. And uh, she actually said, "Oh no, well, Abby Myers, just because I've seen her play, and she's actually yeah, in top form." Yeah. So it was great to actually hear that from Alison yeah. because it was I want to challenge myself against the best, and the best I feel right now in form was Abby Myers because she has had a few hitting practice uh, sessions with her. Uh, so just great that she says, yep, yeah, I, I, I want to play the best out there and beat them on um, on my term. So no doubt. Very much looking forward to this. This one coming up very shortly here from uh, Melbourne Park. So uh, don't go away. The girls will be on court shortly for the second semi-final. Abby Myers and Alison By, the winner to play Jamie Foolis in the final. This match coming your way very shortly.
Well, here we have our second semi-final of the day. And it is in the blue dress closest to us, Abby Myers. And in the grey long top, the number two seed, Alison By. As Brett Phillips has a bit of a stint on the sidelines. And taking his place is Boyana Babusik, who comes back into the booth. Good afternoon, Sean. Well, we've been big on our tips this whole tournament. Yes. Um, Bodge. Now, because I wasn't here to start, although in our production meeting, I did hear that you have taken uh, Jamie Fullis. You, so, yep. you get a big tick there. Okay. So, who have I got in this one? Uh, you have... So, oh, I have Abby Myers and you have okay. Alison By. Yep. I have Alison By. So, you're giving me the number 2C. That's very generous of you. Yeah. Have you, uh, sorry, Alison By that you can see on screen there. The 26-year-old, ranking of 410. Career high, though, peaked last year in November of 2015 at 305. The World Cup playoff last year, <coughs> losing in the first round to Belinda Woolcock. Losing Love 6 in the final set, so... Not ideal. However, she's had a, a giant killing run in this wildcard playoff in for, for 2017 Australian Open. So she's done extremely well getting over the top of Angelique Svinos and then Sarah Tomic in a tight three set match. Their opponent today, Abby Byers, age 22. Currently ranked 598, has been as high as 472, and that was this year in February. Played a number of $10,000 events, going deep into those draws. Three of those played in Turkey. She made a couple of semi-finals and a quarter-final appearance, then yeah, returned to Australia to Australia later in the year. She made a quarter-final in Tweed Heads. $25,000 event and in October qualified and made the round of 16 in Toowoomba another $25,000 event did win two doubles titles this year she was in the final of the doubles two wildcard minutes. playoff yesterday her partner Nate the Bane but just not being able to get across the line she's back for another opportunity to play in a wildcard final the luxury, do you, Bodge, of spending too much time thinking of the disappointment of yesterday? You're just going to get on with the job? If you're a one ball this way, one ball. I'm sure, the professional that she is, Myers, she'll be gearing herself up for a big challenge, and it's a big task against Alison By, the number two seed. I was just telling BP, Bodge, we, of course, spoke to Alison By. When I asked her the question, who would you rather play, Abby Myers or Nate the Baines? And she actually said, oh, Abby Myers, she's in good form at the moment. So yeah. I'd love to sort of test myself against the best. Abby Myers has run through this tournament. She took out the number five seed, Tammy Patterson, in the first round, eight, six in the third set. And big then, hitting from both yeah, players. Big hitting. And then took out the number four seed, Nate the Baines, her doubles partner. One minute. Well, Six, four, six, three. So she's taking out two seeds. She's come up against Four, another can you roll seed. One ball? Can she make it three in a row? One ball. No, th this one's fine. Just some fans talking about how they get their pictures on Twitter. Hashtag. Saying, hashtag AO, AO playoff. playoff. <laughs> you sure? Is it playoffs? Is it 2017 playoff? No, no, no. It's AO playoff. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this semi-final match. Let me show you the, the picture I want to put in. sets, first two tie break, final set advantage. <laughs> to the left of the chair, Abby Myers. And to the right of the chair, Alison Barr. Myers won the toss and chose to serve. Tie. Bodge, where do you feel this match will be won and lost? Both players are very big first serves, so obviously they can serve well. Abby's a very aggressive player. 
needs to find that consistency in her ground strokes. And Alison Bay obviously loves to move forward. So for Alison, it'd be big serve, looking for the short ball or looking for the ball coming in the air, taking it early. Abby will be looking to get that first punch. You would have seen, I mean, firsthand as well, the blustery conditions that we're experiencing right now. So it looks as if it's actually just died down ever yeah. so slightly. Though there are some trees in the background that you can see that are moving pretty heavily, but I mean, it's nothing compared to what we saw in previous vision. First set, Abby uh, Myers. Second semi final play. for a chance to play Jamie Fullis. It's Abby Myers to serve. Fifteen thirty. There's that first serve. Good put away. Save there down the tee. You know, if she can get a hold of that first serve, it'll be absolutely massive. So she's got another break point to try and save here. Judging that, that backhand, so maybe a bit of a let off. Abby Myers and Deuce. off it. Jeez. A bit of assistance from the net. Big eyes out. Just want to take that luck now and just try and run away with this game. Don't want to get into too much of a slog. Advantage by. Opening game 
is a break of serve for Alison Bai, and she will sit down with a one game to love lead in the first set. Maybe just a few early nerves from Abby Myers in this in the start of this first set. So important just to establish yourself as a player when you are in a semi-final, final. Just get rid of those nerves, keep the feet moving, get the ball back in play, especially on a windy day. And what you'd want to do is oh, she had a yeah, tough service game there, deuce, advantage, her, and then advantage by. So she'd want to make sure that this is a tough game for by yep. to give it to her too easily. Oh. Fifteen. Fifteen. Thirty four. Sure she collected that as she would have liked Abby Myers, but still effective. Nice angle. She sets up break back point. Let Fisser. Juice. Just needs to take those types of opportunities. Break point, second serve. Get on the board. See, so I'm gonna skip back yep. and take that backhand. Maybe a, a foot behind instead of taking a forehand. Maybe that's where footwork is so important. Bodge. Advantage by. How quickly it turns into a point to consolidate the break. Uh, Alice and bite. Boyana, that looked uh, a that little bit long, I thought. That was very close. It maybe could have skidded off the line. Sometimes, actually, yeah, when it does maybe have that skid, maybe the indication is that it did clip part of the line, but... Game. 
A minus. Big forehand One down game. line. That'll give her a little bit more confidence. That's what we said at the start of this game. Myers needed to make sure it was a slog. It was, it was hard. I think Bai helped her on a couple of occasions, but at the same time, Myers eventually took her opportunities to level things up. just came out at the wrong time for Abby Myers taking that ball maybe too into the service action to to halt fifteen off Just great work to open up the court. I couldn't do anything about that. Too much open space for Myers to work with. Just needs to keep it out of the hitting zone of Abby Myers because when she has time on that forehand, she's lethal. Abby Myers, she holds Myers serve. She's played the last two games now. And she has a 2-1 lead in the opening set of this second semi-final. Fifteen left. Let's 
30 lap. Can be a brutal sport sometimes, Bodge. Just looking at the players here, you can see Abby Myers with the ankle strap on her right ankle. I'm sure that one's just precautionary, but Alison Byer with also some tape, I think on her left ankle, right shoulder. Jamie Fuller's had the elbow taped. Yes. Right elbow taped. I'd say rarely do players throughout the year get through without having some sort of niggle or right, so injury. Right foot, Alison Bye. Such a demanding sport. Do you need running repairs during your time on tour? Do I need what? Did you have any running repairs? Running repairs. Ankles always or had a, always had a niggle. Yeah. Always. Wrists are a big one, aren't they? In tennis. Maybe some wrist strapping as well for by. Game by. Two games all. Oh, serves her way out. Levels this first set at two games all. Similar to the first set in the previous semi final. Really tough to see from Say for that matter. Who will get on top in this first set? Just super work there from Abby Myers hitting that spot. Brutal serve she possesses. Forty love. That's how dangerous she can be off that serve. Two unreturnable serves and then a short response sets her up nicely at 40 love. Let for serve. curse. That's right, Bodge. <laughs> we've been we've been uh, putting that on some of the players all tournament long. See the music blaring in the background. What's going on? Saturday afternoon in Melbourne. Game mice. Impressive hold there Last for leads Abby by Myers. And she now has her nose in front. 2 1, 3 2 in this first set. So Alison Barr looking to get a comfortable hold here to tie things up here in the first set. A couple of breaks of serve early in this first set. However, things are back on serve. Fifteen. 
between love. Forty love. Fifteen. And the close one, just skidding. As you mentioned earlier, Bod just skidding off the back of the line. Maybe Myers really just testing the length of the court. Game by. Three games. Hold for Allison Bart. Real. A lot of rallies so far. down the middle. So gutsy to go for that. Fifteen all. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, we have seen a couple of plays even fist pump after getting the leg caught, so... Nice by Allison to at least say she was sorry. Thirty fifteen. Warning from Abby Meyer. She's really finding a bit of touch in these last couple of games, especially these last few points. Yeah, all set up by her serving. Great return from Alison Byer for the backhand side. Leaning in nicely. Looking to follow that ball into the net. Byer may have been aware of what was going on and just felt she needed to do something and that was very impressive from the number two seed.
leading off at the moment for Abby Myers. Okay, Myers. New balls, please. So, Abby Myers. Myers uh, leads by very four well games right to now. Ahead 4 3 in his first set. Test by, so that's her challenge. Can she start <coughs> the point? Put the pressure on by. Oh, the clouds have certainly cleared a little bit, not as grey as they were yes, in the previous today. match or in oh. the previous match this morning. The little spots of rain, however, that that has cleared. The sun has come out. Music's blaring <laughs> wherever that is coming from. Tap. Better start from Abby Myers. Bye has to be careful to not serve it too much to the forehand, especially off that second serve, because that's where Abby likes to really dictate play. Love that song. <laughs> not sure if she really aimed for that, but you pay for the whole racket, Bodge. by March she's really trying to assert some dominance in this game Abby Myers by counting her lucky stars that that didn't clip the line otherwise it would have been very much danger signs body serve from Vi 30 Thirty four. Now a chance for Abby Myers to get to a very nice position in this first set. Better returning from Abby. Got her into the point, got her into a winning position, and now she will serve to take this first set. Crucial first couple of points for both players. Abby will be looking for a, a number of first serves. That's really what's helped her so far in this set. Fifteen 
15 long. from Abby Myers. Yeah, real let off there. Well, I was running back to get into position and you know, we could have not tried to go for too much. Volley. What, what the reflexes there. Just thought off the mark, Abby was a bit slow to get to the ball, but did enough. As you said, the Matrix volley. Forty thirty. Why is doing well to counter those couple of balls that really skidded off the line from Alison Byers' racket? We're looking at a set point. to the slice, but the ball was way too far in front of her. What? Advantage mass. Point opportunity for Myers. <coughs> down the tee, out wide. Does like the down the tee. I'm gonna go out wide. Okay. Now, she she should have gone down the, the tee. <laughs> <laughs> does she go for the second serve? Hey man, first set Myers. And there it is for Abby Myers. She Six goes one step three. closer to a date with Jamie Fullis in the final. She takes the first set in this women's semi against Alison By. Six games to three. just joined us. We are in our second women's semi-final match between Abby Myers and Alison Bai. 
it is Abby Myers who has Ten. taken the first set six games to three. Some impressive hitting from Myers and serving as well. But it will be Alison by second set. Start the second set as we welcome BP back into the commentary booth. Thank you, Bodge. Really good uh, first set from Abby Myers. Unseeded at the start of this week. You just need one breakthrough to set you on your way. 22. Been around a little while. 30 left. If you want to join in on the conversation, hashtag AO Playoff. We will be chatting to Omar Yusika in, in a few moments, so please send your questions through. Omar in the men's singles final tomorrow against John Patrick Smith. 30-50. Well, the firepower's been there for everyone to see from Abby Myers. Yep. And that's one thing we've always noticed about her in the wild card. But very capable this week. She's uh, gone on a great run. Seeds. Forty fifteen. Game by. First game, second set. Just what she needed to do, Alice by holding in the opening game of this second set. Oh boy. Jamie Fullis, if you're just joining us, already through, of course, earlier today in uh, good style. Battle in the opening set against Chandra Mullier and then uh, able to really put her foot down in the second, 6-2. She made the final of the girls' 18 and under, 18 and under singles draw last week mm. before going down to Destiny Aava. So she's got the experience of what it is to play for a wild card. She will have another opportunity tomorrow. Oh, certainly, uh, yeah, certainly super impressed. She's got the, uh, got the tools. Fifteen left. Fifteen thirty. When, when we come to this tournament each year, we look at players. You know, as we know, on both sides, they rank from zero to somewhere around what two thousand. Yeah. And they're always trying to work out the differences. And we know consistency is what all these players strive for. Not only match to match, but just in points. Thirty-one. Almost certainly with an aggressive.
aggressive mindset, which you like. Just need to get self control Let's as well. First of all. Here. Let's not give Alison by looking during this uh, second set. Well, Bodge, we spoke to JP Smith earlier. Yeah, we sure did. Forward to uh, tomorrow's final, and uh, his opponent has uh, drifted in, Omar. Okay. Good to see you, Omar. Yeah, good to see you too. Thanks for having me. What's uh, what's happening on a Saturday for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, I've got a lot to be honest. Probably One game lightly today. I haven't hit yet. Woke up a bit late, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm going to hit after this you know, for a little bit, try Thank to get you. some rhythm, and get ready for tomorrow. Must be pretty happy with your form. Two sets to love down against Marinko, and then your last two matches you've won in straight, comfortably yesterday, pretty quick. So, how are you feeling otherwise? Yeah, um, I think uh, my first round sort of uh, shook me a little bit, you know. And, um, it sort of worked me up, you know. Um, I was happy to get through that. And then uh, yesterday, actually the day before against Gavin was a good match as well. I thought I played better than I did the first day, and then definitely yesterday just got even better, you know. Yeah. So I'm not really complaining. <laughs> I think you made the remark yesterday. I mean, Love 15. you know, Chris really well. He'd been in great form. He's knocked over, um, you know, Groth in the previous round. He's been on the rise. And I think everyone predicted that might have been a really tough, potentially four or five set match. Yeah, yeah. Quite definitely. an unbelievable scoreline for you. Yeah, um, me and Chris are actually good friends. You know, we play each other maybe a few oh. times, but I know we all practice all the time. We're at tournaments. So we know each other's game pretty well. But um, yeah, I think he was a little bit off yesterday. And I think I just was the better person. Um, so yeah, I think the conditions suited me a bit more, you know, the court. I like playing on these courts and um, it suits my game a lot. So Love 30. I was happy to get that. You're winning comfortably, but sort of every sort of moment where you maybe missed a shot or lost a point, you got really frustrated with yourself. Is that because you knew how important each point was or what was behind that? Yeah, you know, um, when it's best of five, you know, every point counts and you just don't want to lose that extra set because otherwise it's another, you know, another drag for your set and, you know, as you're getting closer to the end of the tournament, you want to save as much energy as you can. 15, um, yeah, I was just getting a bit frustrated because I was been working on those. Uh, I've been working on those shots lately, you know, and I've missed them, and just again, and then I keep working on them, and you miss them again. It's pretty frustrating. <laughs> so if you're just tuning in, I'm out. You're seeker with us, uh, of course, to play J.P. Smith in the final tomorrow. We're watching the women's second semi-final here. The winner to take on Jamie oh. Paulus and uh, Abby Myers, the unseated player, has uh, taken the first sit here in a. Very uh, interesting game three with that uh, by serving. I I'm just keen to ask you about how the journey's going. It's that's not easy out on the tennis tour. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you think back to 15, winning four. the 2014. I think 14, it was boys yeah. singles over there at the U.S. Open, and um, of course you played, uh, you know, main draw of the Australian Open. There's ups and downs, ebbs and flows. How do you think it's all sort of tracking for you at the moment? Yeah, definitely. You know, tennis is not an easy sport. You know, you're individual. Um it's been a long year for me, ups and downs, you know, but um, I'm happy that this year is coming to an end, sort of, you know, and I'm happy I've been playing some good tennis near the end of the year. Hopefully I can uh, I can finish the year off well, you know, and have a good start to 2017, which will be a pretty will be a good game. Now marks. that you did have a full sort of year on the men's tour, is there anything by two that you would to change going into next year after the Australian summer? Um, I think I just need to get fitter and strong, you know, you know there's uh, some big boys out there and um, I'm not the tallest guy out there. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think my fitness is definitely a key for me for 2017. It's become huge, hasn't it? I mean, you, you want to have to look at the top of the men's game, how brutal it is. Yeah, definitely. Murray, no. Djokovic, and exactly. I suppose uh, no room. you watch the best players playing and you know what you've got to do. It's a matter of really, I suppose, knuckling down and just applying that. Everyone's got ability. We watch and we're watching players here in the three, four, five hundreds. Everyone can hit the ball pretty yeah, well yeah. and he's technically okay. Um, it's just that ability to grind it out and stay in matches a lot longer and that comes down I suppose the physical side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, tennis is just getting better and stronger. As the year goes on, you know, people are uh, discovering new exercises, you know, and they're getting stronger. So yep. it's definitely a big key. Mm. You're playing JP tomorrow. Ah. You've played doubles with him. Uh, How do you go about that, playing your former doubles partner in the final tomorrow? Yeah, you know, it's always going to happen. You know, you're going to play one of your friends because you, you meet a lot of people on the tour, you know, and then you become friends with them, so... I guess it's going to be a good match tomorrow. Me and JP played actually once before in the long, long marathon last year. Yeah. 15 left. The second round of the qualifying. I think it was about 
three and a half hours or maybe more. You know, um, I think I got him 12-10 or something, 10-8. In the third set, you know, um, I think he was pretty devastated after that. But you know, <laughs> we've become good friends after that. So um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Abby Byers is just uh, breaking surf here. So she's in a great position uh, looking for a 3-1 lead and already set up here against Alison Byer. I suppose just you know, that, those friendships and life on the tour, you talked about, you all know it's such an individual sport and um, you know you, you travel with certain people throughout the year and it can be isolating at times. You, I mean, you need those good people around you, don't you? Whether yeah. it's you know, your immediate sort of family, friends or just you know, good um, fellow tennis players you can meet that you can, uh, if you've got to travel with them or spend time with them, you, you need people's company you, you can enjoy yeah, to exactly. have that balance outside exactly. of the tennis court. Yeah, um, it's always good to have people, you know, you're comfortable around with when you're travelling, definitely, you know, if you ever need, you know, practice and you're in a place that not, not, none of the Australians are at, you know, you can always ask yep. someone from around that you've met before and um, definitely you can play, find doubles partner easier, it's always good, you know. Question from one of your fans, Omar. It feels like you're playing more solid and consistent to this time last year. What part of your game has improved most? Um, I think I've become a lot stronger in, um, in my game and I've seemed to, as I've been on the tour a little bit more, I seem to realise what I need to do more and um, what like each point, how each point is you know, important. Um, I just, I've been looking after my server a lot, I've been working on my serve, you know, different patterns on my serve, so I've been Served have very well yesterday. Yeah, I think I've been serving a lot better this yep. week. You know, um, I'm happy with the way I've been serving. Thirty-four. So clearly, it it had mean a hell of a lot to you to have some certainty to go into Christmas knowing I'm booked in January 16. Yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully it's a good day tomorrow for me. Um, I would love to finish the week on a great note as, as well, um, but you know what happens, uh, definitely it's been a good week for me and yeah. I'll just be ready yeah. for 2017, no matter what. Are you encourage Two games. I mean, we all get impatient. Just, I mean, you know, everyone wants everyone to have success, success early. And you look at the average age of the top 100, and this guy's playing in their 30s who are playing, you know, very, very good tennis. So it's a, it's a long journey, and everyone goes on their own in little individual ride. I mean, do you sometimes have to tell yourself, just be patient, it will come when you're striving for success? Yeah, you know, I think that's what people uh, seem to get frustrated at, you know, when something's not going your way and it keeps going and going, you know, there's, you get stuck in a hole sometimes, and um, it's tough to get out of, you know, it's not easy for you to yourself. And then the whole world is coming down on you, that's what you think, but um, I've definitely learned how to sort of look, you know, um, I don't know how to say it, but just to look how li how good life is, you know, and just enjoy it while it's out there. Yep. Being a junior champion, how different is it playing that's juniors now that you've had a year on tour? What would be the biggest difference between juniors and seniors, or that transition? Um, I think it's just, you know, like a... Uh, you said before, people are a lot older, so they have more experience, you know. But I actually enjoy, you know, the tour, and I, I learnt, I've learnt a lot of stuff over the years. It's, it's a pretty big transaction for me. Transition, sorry, not transaction. Could be a bigger transaction <laughs> yeah. if you do okay. Hopefully. <laughs> 40 left. Um, yeah, you know, my the mental side is a lot different. You know, a lot of juniors, you know, they seem to get angry when they lose a game, frustrated, and in the men's, you know, they seem to keep their cool a bit yeah. more. So it's a bit tougher to break through them. Another question from one of your fans. What's your dream first round matchup if you win the wild card? Great matchup. We well, played Joe Wilfred Sunger in the second round. That's yeah, not a bad that matchup. Was, that was bad. <laughs> Game by. That's a good one. I wouldn't mind playing. By leads by uh, three games Nick. to two. I wouldn't mind playing Nick. Nick. Yeah. I think that would be good. I'd love to play <laughs> Nick, you know. I think uh, there'll be a lot of people out there. And, uh, It'll be a good fun, you know. I'll try and get under his skin a little bit, you know. <laughs> so Alison Byers just turned things around here. She's broken, then she's held for three two. I was just trying to think back to your first round match, which was just out on um, what court was it on last year before court you played soccer? Eight. You played Um I played Ilya Marchenko. That's right. I remember the atmosphere, you could hear it from a mile away. Yeah, yeah. great support that day. Yeah, that was a good uh, good day for me, you know. The whole like, <laughs> Omar army came out and had their full force. <laughs> and they weren't uh, they weren't shy, that's for sure. Um, they were pretty loud, which was good, you know. Yep. 
does that help? I mean, I'm always intrigued about that sort of stuff. Does that help you as a tennis player, or do you sort of you're so zoned into what you're doing that you're not um, really it's a noticing? Bit of both. You know, I'm pretty zoned in, but I can sort of hear them in the background, um, you know, cheering for me, and uh, it's definitely good. If some players ah. hate it, and, but I love to. I love I love them. And, yeah, you know, they're good people. And, I love tennis. So They're out here this yeah. week. They were pretty loud yesterday. They were. You was know, that your mum sitting next to them? It was my mum. She was getting a bit yeah, nervous. She, I think she wants to be part of them, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> she's giving them all hugs and kisses at the end. Yeah, she's definitely happy. You know. um, <laughs> she's going to be a bit stressed tomorrow, that's for sure. Yeah. And another question. Hi, Omar. How do you fancy your chances against JP, given your wins over <laughs> Matosovic and O'Connell were based on their fatigue? Um, you know, JP's had a tough matches as well you know so but he's definitely a good player and um, he's lefty as well so we're gonna have to do a few things different against JP tomorrow but um, I'm really Love looking forward 15. to you know, I've had some good wins so far and I'm looking forward to playing tomorrow. Last job JP this question because you're both left-handed yeah. is it different playing a left-handed because you wouldn't normally so yeah um yeah I haven't played any lefty lefties this week actually I haven't played lefties in a while but um I don't mind playing lefties you know 15. you have to change a little bit but it's it's not something you make a big impact in my game. So important hold here for Abby Myers, who uh, was on her way in the second set, but it's just been a uh, peak back, and then Myers now leading it three games to two. A lot of good stories, Omar, you know, possibly emerging in, the, in, in men's tennis. I mean, obviously Andrew Whittington would have liked to have done better uh, this week, he's had a terrific year to get inside the top 200. 15, um, You know, Max Purcell won a tournament. We've seen the emergence of Polmans, obviously. Uh, Blake Mott uh, won his uh, first uh, challenge. That was down in Tassie, I reckon, mm. earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, you know, Chris O'Connell and Alex you know, Dimino making the Wimbledon Junior Final. So there's, there's a good crop, including yourself, who are, who are coming through and emerging. Yeah, definitely a lot of players, um, good players actually in this draw. You know, um, I think I did well as... I've been playing a bit up and down this year, so I was happy to make my way to the final tomorrow and I'm looking forward to it. Oh. To watch much of the uh, the girls' tennis or follow follow the progress. Um, I haven't seen much of the girls actually, but um, I know that Jamie was in the final as saw as well. And yeah. You know, she's she trains up down th on the other side with me, so it's good to see her doing well. And yeah. You know, she's been playing some good tennis, so she's been working hard, which she, should, she deserves to be in the final tomorrow. So who's been warming you up? Have you kept the same partner every day? Have you eaten the same meal? Um, so any superstitions? Sort of been warming up with a friend of mine. Um, maybe food. I've been eating sort of similar pasta. <laughs> The same pasta, actually. But yeah, I'm a little superstitious with that stuff. Jeez. Big, uh, big game here for Myers to hold to get the three all. Advantage Myers. Uh, 
representing a country that hosts one of the four Grand Slams. It must be it must be pretty special, and Rod, you can yep. sort of talk to that as well. I mean, we're pretty fortunate to have that opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Advantage mice. For uh, Abby Myers. Three games off. Keen to ask you, Omar. Well, I just saw um, some photos the last couple of days of Lucas Huig. Make sure I pronounce that right. He's been training with uh, Roger Federer. And I went to Wimbledon this year, and um, he had a, obviously he's had a great run in a couple of slams this year. And he loves to try and access those best players where he can. I think he's been over, I think he's based in Dubai, and he tries to really train them and just pick the brains of those best players. Have you had, a, I mean, are, are there players that are accessible to you through the year that you can just sit, sit down in the locker room or you cross paths with that you can sort of just, you know, gain a bit of knowledge off or just talk about life on the tour? I've got definitely a lot of players um, along the year, you know, I've become friends with some of them. Yep. So far, Love 15. I'm pretty good friends with Kay in Shikori, you know, he's a nice guy and um, he always sits down, he always makes time, you know, to have a chat with me, and, which I appreciate a lot. Um, you know, one of our Aussies, Leighton, as well. You know, Leighton's definitely helped me a lot throughout this year. And, um, Has he shared a word with you this week? Because he's been watching a fair bit. Yeah, um, he's been watching, but, you know, he's been um, telling me uh, good stuff, you know, all that stuff. But I think he's going to have a chat to me after maybe the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely had a training camp with him. 15. All the boys, actually. A lot of the boys in the draw, actually. We had a pretty big camp of two weeks, for three weeks, actually. Which has been definitely it's a lot of fun, you know, and uh, Leighton was there and a few more coaches, which was good for us before the playoff. So is it all tennis for you, or are there other things that are you do on the side? Yeah, I mean, tennis players, I suppose, along the journey, you always... 30, 15. Maybe going to have a, not necessarily a plan B, but just some other things that occupy you for life after tennis, or is it all just sort of focused on the tennis? Uh, all about tennis actually for, for, for me you know it's trying to do my best as I can to yeah. try and be at the top and um, that's what I haven't been really thinking about what the next step would be but it's not just tennis 40, 50 yeah definitely you know if, if that happens you know not the it doesn't but I'll definitely um, yeah try and find something that I enjoy and makes me happy Wait, please, wait, please. Game, bye. So, bye holds 4-3. Yours, please. Six by leads six. by four games to three. Well, mate, nice of you to stop by. Uh, good you. luck. Appreciate uh, it. For tomorrow, we reckon it will be a, a cracking final uh, between two lefties that know each other very well, and uh, it'll go right down to the wire. And all the best for 2017. Thank um, you. Appreciate hopefully it. a really good year where you continue to build. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm Art Yusuka. Joining us ahead of the final tomorrow against uh, J.P. Smith here at the Australian Open uh, wildcard playoff for uh, 2017. Lots of ebbs and flows in this second set. Now, Abby Myers with a really important service hold here. So, making it some way out again. Love 15. 
Started this year just outside the top 700, Abby Myers. So this would be a significant breakthrough to get through to a final. Three uh, semis on the IT ah! tour, a couple of quarterfinals this year. Good little patch uh, through it Turkey. Was a bit late. over the fifth and the fourth seeds and looking for the scalp of the second seed here but needs to hold this game Fifteen thirty. I was just trying to recall that bodge who you played in your semi when you won. The playoff? Yeah. I Remember? played. <laughs> I played Ash Buddy in the quarters and Arena Roddy Nova in the semi and then Monique Adamzak in the final. Fifteen forty. So huge opportunity here for Alison Byers. Just, just next to the chair. Playing thing. steadily. Myers making a few errors. Thirty forty. Serve. Oh, Serve very well this tournament, yeah, Abby. Oh dear. She can certainly unleash. It's just that consistency, isn't it? Just getting more balls in play. Let's first serve. Advantage mice. Okay, mice. Oh, I'll tell you what, this has been a fear. Come back in this game from four games. Mice, a couple of big serves. Opportunity missed for Ellison by, but well played by Myers. Certainly got the firepower here. She tries to get to the finish line. That one was going over by. 
little bit of luck for Myers. Fifteen on. Now, Bodge, uh, Jake, ha hashtag AO Playoff if you want to join the conversation. Quick question for Boyana. <laughs> Do you miss being on the tour? And thank you for the great commentary. Yeah, she does a great job, uh, oh, uh, thanks, Jake. Jake. Uh, a seamless uh, transition. <laughs> oh. It's been two years now? 20... 20... 40, 50. 2012, I won it because yep. then I played in the 2013 Oz Open. Look, the, there's certain times of the year where I, where you do. I think like any professional athlete, you spend, you invest your whole life in being the best player that you can be. So there's game obviously bar. moments where you miss it because that's your whole life until it ends. Bye leads by five games to four. As we say, bye take a lead in the second set, five, four. And there's certain tournaments I think that you either loved playing or you did well at that always get you throughout the year. And obviously yeah. the wild card playoff being one of them, I've got very yeah. fond memories of that. The Aussie summer is always a t not a tough one, but it you're, you'd, any play would love to play at the Australian Open um, and play at Brisbane, and I did well at that tournament, Hobart. So there's always those certain tournaments that always get you. Um, but I'm still heavily involved in the sport. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be uh, commentating and, and coaching yep. and still know the players and the coaches very well. Rowan Fisher on the far left was my coach when yes. I won it. Now the national tennis uh, women's manager Nicole Pratt in the middle, head of women's tennis, and Louise Fleming does a good job of working with some of the younger athletes. So, look, I'm I'm back in Melbourne every year, um, and I still pick up a racket every now and then. So, time. Yeah, I, I do miss it at times, but I have also found other interests. And at some point within a professional career, it does end. Yep. And you have to find things. Then you know what's next, and, <coughs> um, and that's what I found. So. No doubt. I mean, it's like anyone who's played elite level sport. It's it's tough yep. initially to step away from, I suppose, the what you love doing and the lifestyle that uh, goes with it as well. And uh, I think the first. I suppose you quickly realise it's only a very small window yep. of your whole life. Absolutely. Isn't it? And I think the first. It, it gets easier. I think as time progresses. I think those first couple of years, it's a hard transition. Um, as as many Love athletes. 15. Well, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of many athletes. The transition is tough. Yeah. But um, I, for one, are still yeah, Thank you. still watch the sport, still play the sport, just see it from a different perspective, I guess. Yep. So a big game here for Abby Myers. Love 15. That love 30. Love 30. Fifteen thirty. She did her last service game. Coming up with some big serves when needed most. What advice would you give, Roger, to an up-and-coming young player? We've had the twelves, the fourteens, the sixteens yep. here at Melbourne Park right throughout uh, December for the showdown. Let's just watch this point. Backhand up the line from Myers, so she gets it back to 30 all. Look, you have to love the game. I think you have to really enjoy enjoy what you do. Um, you need to have a good team around you. I think support's huge. It's a very individual sport, and it's easy to get down and out. And, and try not be so hard on yourself. Um, I took losses very better. hard, um, and. I think if you can, the quicker you can bounce back, the better. Yeah. Well, I, I was actually just out the back in the uh, the lunchroom. I was just reading uh, the latest edition of the Australian Tennis Magazine. Yeah. There was an interview with uh, Dominika Sibakova. Looking back on her career, uh, one thing that she could possibly change, and she made that remark that I shouldn't have been so tough on myself yeah. after losses. Yes. Because it is such a long journey, and 
I suppose the sport of tennis, I mean, you're sort of going to get back on your bike pretty quickly because there's, there's a tournament yeah, the next week. Absolutely. It's not, and it's there's not another, a six month off season. And there's another opportunity to do better. And if anything, it can turn around so quickly. So the quicker you can bounce back, the better. So it's a set point for Alison Bay. Second set by squares it up here at Melbourne Park. This one's going go to go to a third Russell. to decide who meets Jamie Foulis in the final tomorrow here at the Australian Open 2017 playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I've just got a lap. Bring in these balls, please. Yep, bring in the balls. Well, we just await the third set here at uh, Melbourne Park, and well, this man. Uh, oh, what is going on here? Clearly uh, doing you something we probably should be doing, Sean, but. <laughs> you knew the stream was on. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's whispered, you're on. Oh, hey. Give it your best. 
dips. So both, uh, both girls just having a, a break. Oh, it's <laughs> still gone. <laughs> Good grief. Toothpaste out, I can't tell you this man's name. <laughs> so, a set of piece here and a little bit of entertainment. As you do. <laughs> there is a gym on site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need a gym. Just, just create a gym. Get that back up again? Back. Back back in, in the stands. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you're saying we should go join him? Well, I'm happy to, if you want to <laughs> do this on your own. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alison Byers, she's the seated player here, and certainly wasn't totally out of sorts, but was behind the eight ball a little bit in that uh, <laughs> place. Who's got the camera on this bit? <laughs> I, okay, I got the first two exercises. I'm not sure what's going on here, though. Up and in. Someone AO playoff between us. <laughs> what a what exercise you call that one? AP, um, Abby Myers may have just done something a little bit smart to take away the confidence that By has worked her way into. You can see they're just uh, Abby Myers now coming back onto court from her little break. Yep. Clearly, By was. Uh, in a really good position just to break the momentum, get off court, go to the bathroom, just wash your face or um, change your shoes, change the dress, whatever it is. So we'll yeah, we often see that you know, when a player loses a little bit of momentum, they'll maybe just uh, take a little extended uh, break. And look, she certainly had her chances in that second set, Abby. I mean, she's a, a pure ball striker, but when you play aggressively, so it comes down to a bit of control, and uh, I always thought she's had the talent, and she's got as high as 472. She's 22 years of age, so she's been around for, uh, obviously, juniors, making that transition at 18, 19. Hasn't really been able to elevate her game to the next level. So this would be a significant breakthrough if she won today. You just get the feeling, now that Byers won this second set, she can just play controlled aggression. Be Myers it sort of brings her own number. But if she does unleash, paint the lines here, Abby Myers, could be uh, her finest win. from the Jamie Fullis match. I mean, she'd be rubbing her hands together saying, stay out on court a bit longer. Mm. Tie yourself out while she's in the recovery pools or yeah, in the, the cafe. The advantages of uh, yeah, playing that first match. 30. Had uh, totally quantified, isn't it? How much difference it makes, but clearly I mean, you'd like to have a bit of an extended period between... Uh, Match you've just played in your next match. But she looks in good shape, Jamie. Really good, solid week. Fault! Well, considering the turnaround is 24 hours here versus the 48 that the players have been used to. Ah! And I was listening to your comments before about Dominika Sibulkova, how you just got to get over that and there is a tournament next week or next the next day almost when you lose one so yeah they're they're probably used to it so yeah, which is not easy i imagine when you're in a bit of a rut and you're, you're not in a bit like a golfer you know when you're not in great form you sort of you probably want to fit. go away and not have to play competitively and just go back to the practice courts and work on some things but when you need to build a ranking you need to keep playing yeah as long as you're fit and able so you do have to pick yourself up quickly and put maybe a, a bad performance behind you. Just have, have a bit of faith that you can play the game. Things will turn.
course he has Just an onslaught that she could provide sometimes, Abby Myers, from her ground strokes. By just trying to stay on that baseline, not get pushed back, and yeah. fortunately on that occasion it was an unforced error. Yep. Resulted. Game back. There's a very loose uh, forehand, and that gets out of the opening game. Well, think of the players who play with that mindset. I mean, Lasicki is the one that springs to mind instantly. Someone who's been... It's such a good comparison. ...in the top yeah. 20, is now somewhere at 80-odd in the world at the moment, who... Former finalist at Wimbledon. Exactly. Who tries to hit every ball as if it's their last. Um, you know, Yumi Lagaitasova has always uh, played... Yumi Wolf at his now, of course. Wolf, yeah. He's always played that way. First strike, she's trying to hit a winner. So very hard, I imagine, to change that style. Very habitual, that's the way I play. I mean, coaches will be sitting there going, God, just you know, get that first ball back into play and let's have a, let's construct a point here. And understand the moments when you can unleash, yeah. you can yep. pull the trigger. Yep. Versus the ones where you do need to be a bit more conservative and mm. sometimes allow your opponent to make the mistake as well, understanding what position you are in the match. Yeah, well, I think the, the latest edition of the Australian Tennis Magazine was comparing the sort of the tennis uh, geniuses with you know, the very mechanical players. It's a fine point. Covering some ground, both players. Love 15. Kerber's got to world number one. Uh, you know, Djokovic has got to world number one. Very good mechanically. Not necessarily um, always beautiful to watch. They're just constructing points. That's right. The I right mean, time to pull the trigger. Yeah, they they can play beautiful tennis, but they also know how to win ugly. They know how yep. to. Yeah. They know what to do when their game is not at its optimum. We don't, we're not privy to behind the scenes of the journey these players go on as well. I mean, there's so much in the, the, the finer detail. Just there from by the preparation diet. All these little things that add up. It was interesting having a chat to Omar uh, before and, you know, JP. Because we only really often see what's happening out here on the tennis court and hear the Djokovic story and what he did to change his whole diet. Ah! He's took it to a whole new level, the preparation. Oh! Just got to, you've got to have a fierce determination to compete, don't you? It's brutal out here. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you need, need 2,000 players ranked. Yeah. You need... You need something that puts you over the edge. Yeah. You need an X factor. Yeah. Yeah, so nice. from Myers. Good control. One game. Needed to hold there. Game of peace. Third set. Winner to play Jamie Fullis in the final tomorrow. Hashtag AO Playoff if you want to join the conversation. Any observations? Any questions you want to pose? Just want to know if the gentleman in the crowd has uh, finished their workout or if they're still going or not. Well, our cameraman will, will certainly <laughs> tell the story. If we don't get any uh, footage, he uh, would have retreated. Love 15. Eyes. Just 
Force Mill. Well, at least he's being sun smart. <laughs> Very important. 15 on. It's important here for Mai to just continue to make as many first serves as possible. Mm. The last thing she wants to do is roll her second serves in because Mai is. Didn't want to get a first serve in, but it was taken care of by Myers. Yeah, well played. Fifteen four. Deep return on that first strike. I knew she was clearly wrong footed. Yeah. Big opportunity here for Abby Myers. A couple of break points. Uh, going a long way yeah, out in the nice. end. So it's a big game for Abby Myers. She gets the break. And Myers leads it here, two, two games to one. one. That might just calm the nerves a little bit, BP, after what was a poor end to that second <coughs> set for her. <coughs> yeah, it's a, it's a huge moment for her. Just to hold her nerve here. This is such the opportunity that presents. I mean, you wonder what's going through her mind. Hasn't been in this position before. And by at 26, I mean, she'd be thinking, you know, Roddy and Over out of the draw earlier than expected. It's a massive opportunity for me to finally, finally get into a major, have a chance to be in a major by getting to the final tomorrow. Now it's not the be all and the end all, there's always another, another day to live in tennis. These are the benefits of having a, a slam in your country. That's right. The opportunity it presents. Shang Shui, of course, at this year's Australian yeah, Open at 27 years yes. old. Yeah. I mean, a, a little bit of a different story, but yeah. 13 first-round losses in a row mm. around that number, and then all of a sudden just says, this is my last chance, like, get, gets in, finally wins a match. Yep. But doesn't just win one, yeah. two, three, four, getting into that quarterfinal. What a springboard it is. Yeah. There's all, it's all different levels of success, up. isn't it? I mean, not everyone's going to get to world number one, top ten. Yeah, well, we'll quarter final be, I mean, something around uh, 80, 90,000 dollars. Yeah. <laughs> of course, a lot more to play out, of course, but mm. some big stories mm. played later in their career. And you sort of spoke about that with Omar, just the average age on the men's side. Creeping up and up and up. Yep. So there's no reason why at well, 26 you can't. Yeah. Just write, you write your own journey. You write your own story.
And in any game, but in any event, you and I have two spoken games about the, I mean the the years or the times of the 16-year-old, the 17-year-old, the 18-year-old winning Grand Slams or really announcing themselves are virtually over. Absolutely. I don't think we'll ever see it. We might have a bolter somewhere, yeah. but it will be an highly exception. unlikely. events as well BP going on the outdoor courts so if you've got some time feel free to venture down the under 12s and under 16s there's just teams events as well so a lot of things going on the outdoor courts right now yeah, it's a great month the uh, December showdown oh! a lot of young players uh, keen to display their wares who have been uh, showing a lot of promise uh, throughout the year that forehand on this side by a fair way sometimes. Well, I'm sure it's a question she's probably asking herself. I mean, why am I making more returns? And that's probably what's stopping her from really progressing any minus. There's the firepower. She's certainly got the ability. Just too many shots like that. Not many balls back into play. And those ones, I've just that's noticed that she's sort of hooking the ball. Yeah. She's not really following through. Getting that adequate rotation over the ball to have it drop in. Should we just tighten that up? Game by. By leads by three games to two. So a tough one to call in this second semi final. Alison by the seated player, Abby Myers. About 200 spots lower, so she's got a job to do here to uh, try and get past a, a player a little bit more seasoned who's achieved some better results on the tour. Oh, the uh, top's on. And our man with the dips is back. Just got to be careful. I see the uh, chairs are shaking a bit. Yes, sir. Time.
went through to the slips. PP. Just missed time. Got played a couple of those shots. Across the journey. Every now and then. <laughs> Every now and then. Really set herself up for that shot. Leaning into it. Great core position. Yep. It's one two. Let's get that first serve being all important in this uh, this game. Forty thirty. It was another decent serve, and the return was exquisite. Just heard Cree Myers as well acknowledging the great placement from our opponent. Gets it to three all. Uh, three three set continues. After trading breaks, they've now just held serve. So just following each other's patterns now. We'll blink again. Of course, tomorrow we'll be on air from 11 o'clock once again. We'll start with uh, way, the girls. Jamie Fulis ready to go. She's in the final to play the winner of this match. And then uh, Omar Yusika and so JP Smith in the men's final to follow. Should be a great day, BP tomorrow. Yeah, good tennis. Think of you know, think of the players who have won this tournament. I mean, the one that always springs to mind in the last five years or so on the men's side is uh, Jordan Thompson. Yeah, he's going to crack the top 100 this year. He emerged at this tournament, yeah, yeah. watching him at the back blocks and. Passionate, hungry, great competitor. Yeah, we saw Nick Kyrgios in this tournament a few years ago. Well, like the first ever time I saw him in this tournament, Sam Groth was in the top seed and he knocked him out. It was actually on another court that we weren't broadcasting on, but Big there was a fair bit of right. noise coming from that court. Fans certainly uh, gravitated to that match. Should be announced to Nick. Every part of the court. That was a super round for both players. On the women's side, we talked about Jordan Thompson and Kyrgios Groth. We've seen like Casey Delacqua, mm. Marina Rodionova. Some star players on the women's side. Yep. Be lift. Oh. Deep return. Thirty. Thank you. 
brilliant sliding serve out wide. shot. I'm sure if people were following that ball um, really closely, but you could see it move a heck of a lot. So, the adjustment from Abby Myers, very nice indeed. Subtle, slight grip change. Did enough to rip that forehand cross court. Advantage, but. Four three. Second by leads by four games to three. Absolutely clear BP this next service game from Abby Myers. I mean match defining because yeah. if she loses it, yep. she'll be down. 5-3, her opponent having a chance to serve for the match. Eight games. Just the new age sports drink there, BP, the V can. Oh, the uh, yeah, man has said just a, a V can. Yeah. <laughs> and he's gone back with the, what are we calling this one? Is this oh. the up, curl, down? It's almost like the thumbs down towards the edge. What's that? to see he's enjoying himself. Oh, we, all, we all find ways to occupy a bit of time. <laughs> so, Abby Myers. Trailing 4-3 here in this uh, third and decisive set. Neither of these girls have ever been to the World oh. Playoff Final. Choosing to go as close to the line. We see it pay off a couple of times on that second serve down the TBP. Abby Myers, but not a great way to start a double fault. Love 30. Warning signs here. Sitting for a moment. Control it forehand. Back from Abby Myers when she came running back into the court when she was very far outside and just the quick steps just you could hear the shuffling BP yeah. really getting herself set that's what she really needs to be doing all the time sometimes we just see her overplay some shots maybe 
the footwork wasn't quite good enough on that occasion. It was brilliant. Temporary grandstands BP with the, um, you can see the black coverings in the north and south areas of the court. That wind can just almost get trapped in there. Yeah. And that's where it does start to swirl. Yep. It's not a consistent breeze. Yes. Advantage, mice. Game Myers. Nicely done there. Four Ford games on Twitter off. asked Abby to lift, and that's exactly what she did, BP. Well, she stays in it. She's alive in this match. Down love 30. I mean, it could be easy for negative thoughts to creep in. Yep. So a really good bounce back in that game.
30-15. It's a super shot on the run from Abby Mize. Missed a couple of couple of ground strokes. First two points of the game, but that was really nice indeed. The surge forward from Alison By to put pressure on her opponent. Mize was able to counter that movement. Great dipping backhand. Sailing for Bai. Mize has put a couple of good points together. There's that forehand unleashed. So here we go. Get a good look here, Abby Myers. There is the break for Abby Myers. She's potentially a game away. Myers leads by five games to four. From being in the final, if she can hold her serve. Well, at 30 love BP, anything can happen. Myers was able just to construct a couple of points together and all of a sudden got to 30 all and a little bit of help from Alison By. Getting a look on a second serve. As you say, game away for a spot in the final against Jamie Fullis. Just got to get it done now on her serve. I've got the exact stats in front of me, Sean, but I'll have to go back through the records of the playoff. Last time whether we've had an unseeded player make the final or the last time. We need to do a little bit of digging on that. But certainly at the start of the week when you looked at the 16, 16 players in the draw, probably wouldn't have picked Abby Myers to be in the final. We would have put it down as dangerous. Fifteen on. It was good to take care of that ball. We just maybe assisting Myers on the serve, popping up for bye. Didn't expect it to come up as high as it did. Fifteen all.
1540. Certainly not the time you want a double fold. So close, Abby Mahoyes, to making the final. Some work to do here. She has dug herself out of trouble a couple of times. Thirty forty. Let's see if she can do it again. Super shot. Yes. Certainly the story of the week. Unseated to make it through to the final. She can put two good points together here. Advantage bar. It's like you just can't look short at the stage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give her the little out with the wind. Yeah. Oh! You just hear it now. Let's see, dressing the hair, really blowing. Second serve. Jeez. Great serve. Cool. <laughs> Went for everything. Again, that, I mean, that's her. Yep. She'll, she'll go for it. Big mm. point. Advantage. The nice. Say what it, can you say what it takes to make Ooh, it at go. the top level. Yep. And clearly she has the confidence. Even though we might sit here and criticise, why do you go for a shot like that? A big point, a big serve, sorry, like that. When you serve it like that, it can be very deadly indeed. Match point, number one. Game set. And she does nice. it. The 22-year-old from New she South one, Wales, 600 six, six, in the world, has made six, it through four. to the final of the Australian Open 2017 wildcard playoff. A great result for Abby Myers. A great story. And a giant killing run continues as she downs the number two seed. It's the ball kid. Looks his head on the sail and Abby just wants to make sure he's okay. She's a great person. From New South Wales heading into the final and has a match against Jamie Fullis to look forward to tomorrow, BP. Yeah, the uh, Victoria New South Wales rivalry, it exists uh, across lots of different uh, sports, but uh, two, uh, two players that are well, at different stages, aren't they, of their journey? Uh, Fullis at just 17, Myers at 22, a bit more seasoned, been around a while, but Fullis has overtaken her and her own development to be at 425 and Abby at uh, 600. We know there's not always a lot in it uh, when uh, you're ranked in that sort of uh, category, if you like. Uh, so, yeah, great final. It sets it up for uh, tomorrow. We're going to have that from uh, 11 o'clock Melbourne time and then followed, of course, by Omar Yasika and uh, J.P. Smith, which hard to see that one in straight sets, to be totally honest. Two lefties going head-to-head. -head, know oh, each other very well. Yeah, it's going to be a, a great contest. Um, just both players putting their best foot forward in this wildcard playoff for the Australian Open 2017. And I mean, they've both had some easy matches or easy sets, I should say. They've both had some really hard ones and had to dig deep. Just Yaseka, the way he's been able to navigate his way through the last two rounds, might almost just give the edge slightly to him. Not yep. sure where you're leaning, BP, but I mean, B, uh, JP 
in himself has just had a, a pretty good run in the last set of that last match, six love. He has. Uh, he's been here to the final JP, so he's got that experience. Uh, Omar, well, we know he's got the firepower. He's a very capable young man. Um, that one, yeah, toss of the coin, but uh, maybe JP slightly with his experience. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. We will be back tomorrow from 11 o'clock at Melbourne time. We'll start with the girls. We'll finish with the guys to decide one male and one female to make it through to the first Grand Slam of the year. Make sure you join us then from Melbourne Park. Under largely sunny skies. Cloud, nothing to complain about.